Welcome everyone to the Innovate Birmingham interest session. We're here to answer all of your questions regarding attending our boot camps and also provide more information on how you can get involved. Today, we're going to be going through a day of the life of being a boot camp participant, some of the frequently asked questions you may have about participating, the admissions process, and more. Um, we are a team led by Executive Director Catherine Zahara, and we're going to go through um, our staff introductions first. I'd like to also mention that we are going to be answering your questions live in the chat. So please be sure to ask any questions you may have and we will get back to you with your answers. I'll start with myself. I'm Danita Bearden, the Director of Operations. My name is Haley Hoppy. I'm the Director of Engagement. I'm Reggie White. I'm a TA for the Data Analytics Bootcamp. I'm Taylor Abney and I'm one of the instructors for the Data Bootcamp. And I'm Jake Lovett, and I'm a TA for the web dev class. I'm Josh Hearn. I'm the instructor for the uh, web development course. Hi, I'm Garrett Harris, and I'm also a web dev TA. Hey, everyone. I'm Kayla King, and I'm the director of admissions. Hello, I'm Brandy McMillian. I'm also the senior case manager. And I'm Maggie Thompson, and I'm the program analyst. Okay, we're going to get the presentation started now. So we're excited to have you all here because Innovate Birmingham starts with the people we serve. And if you are chosen to be in this program, you will be a part of that population and a part of the people that we have served and any aspiring to tech professional that's coming out of our program uh, becomes, you know, a really strong part of our Innovate Birmingham family and community. So we're excited you're here and interested to learn about the program. Next, please. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was established in 2017. Uh, we worked with a couple of economic development agencies and uh, different employers to see what kind of demand was in the city. And there was a huge gap recognized in the tech ecosystem. Uh, so tons of jobs available and a huge need for tech talent but not enough tech talent to fill it. And in that same vein, we've got all these people that are in our region, local talent that uh, either has never had the availability to be able to go into the tech ecosystem or has barriers, whether they're socioeconomic or systemic that keep them from being successful in the tech ecosystem or even being able to have the training to be able to enter that type of work. So we are here to provide the talent, local talent, and to provide the training and opportunity. Next, please. So you may have taken a look at uh, other boot camps in your search. Um, if you're interested in Innovate Birmingham, I'm sure you probably have seen some of our other, uh, some of the other training providers that are in the region, but there's a, lots of different things that set us apart from those uh, training providers. Our biggest thing I think is we're completely free and that's a big deal. So you are not having to invest your money into the program. We just ask that you invest your time and your commitment and your passion to the tech ecosystem. We have three cohorts a year. Uh, they're about 14 weeks long, so a little over three months. And those cohorts consist of a data analytics class and a full stack web development class. They're short term, they are boot camps. When you think boot camp, you probably think army crawl, boot camp. Well. This isn't that much different. It's a tech boot camp and it's short term intensive training with no, you don't have, it have, have to have any experience before coming in. But the fact that it is so intense and short term, you're not spending two years or four years at another institution of higher learning to get a degree. You are have the skill set and are hireable to be um, 
and to be able to enter the workforce right after that 14 weeks. So that's a big deal. Um, I think there's some kind of stat that you've got set about 700 hours of training specifically for like a computer science degree or something. We get that much time in around 500 hours. So that's like a 200 hour difference, not very much. We uh, used to be totally in person, but we were able to quickly pivot to a virtual um, uh, a virtual operation in a week. And we've had three cohorts so far that have gone completely virtual and it's been great. Um, we also provide professional development training, which other tech boot camps that you may find uh, do not offer that. So we connect you with industry professionals that talk to you about uh, personal branding, your resume, a cover letter, um, your LinkedIn profile, how to network in the tech ecosystem, things that can really make you a marketable tech professional. We also do employer engagement and networking. We set up mock interviews, career fairs. We have a um, vast network of employer partners that we help connect you with uh, upon your graduation from the program. Uh, we also provide supportive services, which we're going to talk about a little bit later to help, um, you know, break down any barriers that you may have while you're in the program that will would keep you from being uh, successful in the program or keep you from completing. Next, please. So take a second to read some of these quotations from our alumni. I'll read one. IB helped me recognize and develop my thing and granted me the opportunity to do something I love for a living. I mean, that's huge. And we only put three quotations here. We could get, we served over 700 people. We could get a lot of quotations that are just like this. We hear a lot life-changing, game-changing. Um, I feel recognized. I feel hope, I feel ready. It's, I, we hear that all the time. Our alumni are really proud to come out, out of our program and our employer partners feel confident that our program prepares them for success. We also, another thing that sets us apart, we also have an alumni community. Uh, and that alumni community has formed a council where um, their updates on, um, job opportunities, training opportunities, um, networking opportunities. I mean, like I mentioned before, we are a family. So once, once you leave our program, you don't totally leave us, you become part of that alumni community. Next, please. One of our mottos is students first. So we always put our participants first and anything that we do is meant to bolster your success in the program. Uh, that means demand driven. That isn't just for our community. We are providing employer demand training, but you wouldn't get a job if we were providing a training if that wasn't demanded by employers. It's a great, um, it's a great symbiotic relationship there. The supportive services, those are all the, also there to uh, put you first. So if you've got our uh, child care needs, we can help you with that. If you need an interview suit, we can help you with that. The professional development services, well, so that you, we don't want you to just come out of this program with the technical skills to be successful. We want you to come out of this program to be a creative an active team member at a business and groom you to be able to move up, get promoted, and perhaps even go into a leadership position, as well as employer networking. Um, our network of employers really sets us apart. We have a great reputation in the community. So when people see Innovate Birmingham on your resume, it means something to them and can put you closer to the top of the list for entry to mid-level roles. Next, please. Here's a quick little video just to show you some of the faces of the Innovate Birmingham graduate family. Just take a second to soak it in. This could be you. Hey.
it's great seeing all these people because we all have, at, at least for some of them, uh, lots of us have been here for the whole five years. Some of us have only been here a year, but we know lots of these faces here and um, it's really exciting to see all of them be successful in their uh, newfound technical careers. Next, please. Here's a great opportunity um, for the ladies out there. We uh, partner with lots of different organizations um, to make sure that we are providing diverse talent to the technical community. Um, and one way that we are doing that is being able to uh, provide more opportunities with tech, for tech training for women. Um, so there is a scholarship available to uh, women to go through our program through the National Center for Women and in Information Technology. So you women, if you apply for this program and you apply through our application and NCWIT, that's what we call that National Center, uh, you will also be, not, you'll not only have the Innovate Birmingham alumni community, you'll also have this really great community of women in tech all over the United States, different networking events. It's a lifelong membership. Uh, you can connect with other women through Alabama, um, as well as in the US about careers or even just upskilling or mentorship. So please keep that in mind as you apply if you are a woman or identify as a female. Next. All right, thank you, Haley. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how you can actually get involved in all of the opportunities that we're talking about today. And that is through our admissions process. Our team has been working really to streamline the process to make it as convenient as possible for the candidates. So especially during this remote environment. So there are several resources available to help you select a class that is the best fit for you and that'll help to prepare you for the right technical career pathway. And then one that'll fit your specific interests. And then at that point, we offer an option of scheduling an admissions counseling session if you still are having a little trouble deciding on which class is best for you. So once you make that decision, of course, you'll complete the application. You will need to complete the whole application or in its entirety before we can actually review your application to ensure that you meet all of the eligibility criteria or at least the minimum eligibility criteria to move forward for the interviewing step. And at that point, um, of course, we'll reach out to you if there's any missing information. But at that point, you will go forward to complete the My Interview, and that's an online interview, so it's really easy. You can do it on your own time as long as you do it within your deadline that we provide for you. And then if it's determined from the My Interview process that you're eligible um, to move forward to the vote, then we will actually meet as an admissions committee, and we will um, actually vote on your entire applicant profile and have a majority vote. If you're approved through our admissions committee, then we also will determine if you're eligible for any of those scholarship opportunities that they were talking about. And we'll discuss some of those options with you as well as assist you in the application processes during the completion of all of your onboarding processes. And as far as those onboarding processes are concerned, um, we do have the, a few things that you would have to do before you could actually get your official acceptance into the program. So you will have to complete your pre-work. And then of course, our case manager will connect with you on completing your background check. If there's anything that you need help with on those application processes, will help you with those. And once you've completed all of those onboarding processes, then you will actually move forward to the acceptance letter and getting ready to start your new career in tech. Okay, so you've been selected. Now what? Um, I think that Haley and Kayla have done a great job so far giving you an overview of our um, organization and how things will work through the admissions process. If you have any questions, again, just put them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer. But like Haley did a good job mentioning, we were able to pivot a year ago to um, moving to completely remote operations. And some of those things included being able to uh, give you loaner computers 
members um, to help you with completing the course or transitioning from assisting with childcare, um, which Brandy will talk about later, um, and less transportation, obviously, because you're not coming in. So I want to just commend the team on being able to pivot and be, use all of our resources, resources between Zoom or Slack, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later, to be able to communicate and really um, engage with our participants. Um, so regarding engagement, we really want to make sure that um, in uh, moving to our remote operation process, we were able to engage with everyone. Everyone doesn't re uh, learn well um, in a remote environment. And so for the first few months in cohorts, we really took um, an opportunity to ask our candidates what they needed from us and how we can better adapt the way that we operated. So we were able to communicate or create, excuse me, a co-working space where we were able to um, set up a Zoom room with our participants and our TAs and just allow people to work together to problem solve, to ask questions, um, to feel like um, as much as of a community that we can. Um, we also have several ways to communicate between uh, Zoom, uh, obviously Zoom meetings and Slack, uh, Discord and Teams. Um, we have weekly meetings with our professional development um, sessions as well as check-ins in the mornings and the afternoons and walkthroughs. So we try, uh, we have tried to really make it as interactive as possible so that you see our faces, that you feel um, the support um, from us um, and that we can still maintain the training and the integrity of our program. One of the things that I'm really proud to say that we do is um, we gather feedback. We want feedback on our admissions process. We want feedback on our uh, actual, um, the actual boot camp itself. And so midway through, we do a pulse check where we have, um, the, we give you the opportunity as a candidate to share how things are going. Are we meeting your expectations? Are there any gaps? Is there anything that you need from us? And so we have several people in place between, um, you know, from the admissions point of view to our case manager who's going to assess your barriers to your um, leadership team member who's your direct contact when it comes to professional development and any questions or concerns you may have with the program. We have individuals in place to, to, um, to gather feedback from you and to make sure that you're getting the most that you can out of the program. All right, guys, so this is Reggie, the TA with the Data Analytics Bootcamp. I'm just gonna go through a rundown of what a day looks like. Um, every morning we have a nine o'clock check-in, just kind of a pulse check to see where everybody is. Um, you know, answer any questions anybody might have from the previous day, just discuss, you know, things not related to data. Uh, there's just a, a time for us to get the day started. Um, from 9.30 to 11.30, that's slotted for instruction. And there may be lecture given by Taylor or it could be self-paced learning where you would watch videos online and do exercises online. Uh, then we break for lunch. We come back at 12.45 for a check-in. Uh, same deal, kind of just pulse check, check-in, kind of talk about what the rest of the day is gonna look like. And then we have that three hour slot uh, for instruction and self-paced learning after that. And then a four to five uh, is, slotted for, is uh, slotted for our last check-in today. Uh, it's kind of to cap the day off. Uh, sometimes we'll have a social activity, just kind of break away from, you know, everything that you're learning because it is a lot. Um, and speaking of it being a lot of content, uh, I'll just talk about the curriculum itself. So we touch on the theory of data analytics, which we talk about what data is and try to get you into the, the mindset of a data analyst. And then we cover a few different pieces of software. Um, First one is Excel, where you would be actually taking an Excel certification for that. Then we'll get into Access, followed by SQL. And then we'll get into Power Query, which is a powerful tool that lives inside of, of Excel. And then we'll move on to Power BI, which Power Query also lives in. And then at the end of the boot camp, you'll get into your capstone project for demo day, where you will actually be collecting real life data in the real world and then you will be preparing that to present to everyone. You'll be presenting the staff, employer partners, family and friends. You'll be on the stage to shine. So that is my part here. Uh, I'm gonna pass it off to the software development guys. 
All right, thank you, Reggie. Um, so I'm Garrett. I'm going to go over a day in the life of the web dev class. Um, so same as data, nine every morning we have a check-in. Just kind of make sure everyone's awake and ready to start the day. From 9, 10 to 11.30, uh, we'll have our lab assignments in the co-working space. And like Danita said, the co-working space is kind of an area for us, everyone to come and work and get help when they need it and just work over labs. 11.30 to 12.45 is the instruction, like instruction team's lunch. Um, Y'all can take lunch whenever you want, but ours is set from 11.30 to 12.45. And then from 12.45 to 3, it's just co-working again, um, working on labs and curriculum. And then from 3 to 3.30, we have an afternoon check-in where we'll just make sure the day is going okay, see if anyone needs help, and kind of give an update on everything. And then from 3.30 to 5 is just same co-working and lectures. And we have lab walkthroughs and we didn't put them on here because we kind of sprinkle them throughout the day, depending on what the lab is. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna hand it over to Jake to talk about the curriculum. Thanks Garrett. So pretty much a high level overview um, of our course is, um, you know, these times are subject to change as well, but generally speaking, it's about five weeks on front end um, which is uh, the things that are displayed on the screen, you know, HTML, CSS, stuff like that. About five weeks on back end, um, which is, you know, passing the data around, getting it from external sources and stuff. We spend about two weeks on full stack, which is uh, tying the two, uh, the two ends together, uh, making full stack applications and stuff. And then we normally have about two weeks for the... Um, full stack group projects, which is going to be like building an entire application uh, that you guys will share on demo day. Okay, let's talk about supportive services for a second of how and why our program is significant. We are aware, understood, and aware of participants facing life sustainable challenges with a gap of support. Besides Innovate Birmingham providing our participants with the skills of training for employment, we also have a primary focus of being supportive with case management services. We recognize our participants may require supportive services that could possibly hinder them from proceeding, such as reducing barriers that may prevent you from a successful completion. We provide supportive services and assistance with local community resources, houses and utilities assistance, child care assistance, mental health counseling, and more. Our wraparound services leverages our participants to succeed and alleviate those barriers to focus with a full capacity and demonstration without a stressor of external domains. Overall, as the full-time support of services senior case manager of NRA Birmingham, my primary goal is to to assist our participants with or without complex situations with a holistic approach. Overall, we are all looking forward to seeing you all. I'm back, hello. So once uh, you get finished with our program and you successfully graduate, uh, what, what next? So, there's lots of different roles that you can go into with the foundation and tech that you get from our boot camps. So if you're in the full stack web development boot camp, you could get be a junior developer. You, if you have an aptitude for the front end or uh, UX or UI design or maybe even CX type of uh, design, that's customer experience. You know, you can get into those roles or you can be in um, quality assurance, which you'll be like bugging, debugging and testing people's code uh, to make sure the product doesn't, can't be uh, broken. So you break it so it can't be broken. Um, you can also get into app development. Um, you could, you know, with a technical foundation, um, you can get into technical sales. Uh, as well as account management, 
um, or even recruiting. We've had some folks go into the recruiting roles because of their technical foundation. They really understand what it takes to uh, for somebody to be successful in one of those roles. In terms of our data analytics bootcamp, of course, a data analyst, um, you're going to be more on the operations side of a business. So uh, business intelligence roles, um, data integration, uh, partner success, digital marketing, IT analyst, um, every company and every organization has data and some need for a data worker. So it's a pretty wide range that you can go there. Next, please. So does anyone, before we move on, does anybody have any questions? And if you do, you can drop them in the chat or you can send your admissions related questions to admissions at innovatebham.com uh, or you can shoot us a message on our Facebook page or uh, at info at innovatebham.com. Any admissions related questions, please go to admissions at innovatebham.com. So a couple of important dates everybody needs to think about. Uh, first, uh, we'd like to invite you to tune in to the cohort 13. That's our current cohort that's going through right now. Their demo day, it's gonna be April 16th. So coming up pretty, pretty fast. Um, so you're invited, it's gonna live stream. Uh, so tune in or register if you can. The final day to apply for our program is April 5th. Uh, so if you can get your application in by then, you'll get reviewed sooner and you'll probably find out sooner whether you get in or not. Uh, you'll have your orientation packet sent by April 26th and then that first day of class starts on May 3rd. If you want to stay up to date with us or share this with any, this uh, information with any of your friends or family, you can follow us at any of our social channels. Uh, post it here um, and sign up for our newsletter at innovatebham.com. Again, inquiries, send an email to admissions at innovatebham.com. All right, now we are going to answer some questions that we receive frequently. The first question is, how do I choose which course is best suited for me? Yeah, so if you're somebody who enjoys cleaning up clutter, you don't like things to be unorganized, you might want to consider being a data analyst. Also, if you enjoy numbers, not so much subtracting, adding, and shooting. it's not math, it's not what I'm talking about, but more or less analyzing them. Like if you are somebody who tracks your, your macro intake, if you're on a diet, if you're somebody who uses a fitness tracker and you, a fitness tracker and you use that to decide, you know, which way you need to go as far as your training is concerned, uh, if you keep track of you know your personal records when you're doing weightlifting, anybody who likes to to keep track of information so they can analyze it, you know, take a look at it and decide where they're going to go next, that's somebody who would probably want to enroll in the data analytics bootcamp. Josh, would you like to answer this question for the web dev class? Sure. So yeah, what we do um, in the web development course is teach you uh, like a specific set of skills, core skills, and then um, we want to use those skills and logic because if we're teaching you software development, you're pretty much learning how to write programs. So we're teaching you how to combine a bunch of front end skills and back end skills and database skills and create full stack applications. Um, so if you're the type of person that enjoys logic, you enjoy learning lots of new tools and um, putting those tools together to create web applications, or really, uh, if you just wanna take the skills that we teach you and move those into another field, um, like Kaylee was saying, with the different jobs you can get, um, then you'd be a good fit for our class. What kind of jobs can you get if you complete the data bootcamp versus the web development bootcamp? Haley? We kind of discussed this a little bit earlier, but just to recap, um, you're going to want to, you're going to have different skill sets that you come out with, with, uh, during our bootcamp, depending on whether you go through the data analytics or the full stack web development bootcamp. Um, and within each one of the, uh, both of our bootcamps are really, um, intensive foundational 
trainings. So uh, lots of times you might find one niche part of the training that you really latch on to. For example, uh, if you're in the data analytics analytics course and you find that you're really interested in SQL. We really give you a foundational introduction to SQL, but if you're interested in getting in a SQL job, you can, you know, find more opportunities and, um, you know, online practice and training to uh, brush up your SQL and become a, like, database administrator or, you know, a, gets a job where you're coding in SQL. Um, or, for example, if you are in the web dev class and you specifically um, are interested in UX, you can use some of the foundational skills that you have learned in our program, um, as well as some design skills that maybe, maybe you came in with some really creative design skills or marketing skills that you really wanted to upskill with some of our um, full stack web development, you can, you know, get into wireframing for a UX or UI role. Um, I would refer back to some of the, that slide that we uh, went over earlier for some of those job titles, but also I would go to Google or LinkedIn and type in job titles for data analysts or job titles for developers or software engineers or web developers, app, app developers, in UX, UI uh, managers, whatever. Look that up and you'll see, you know, people that do it, A, what the different job titles are, because there's 1 million different job titles for everything, um, and then how they got there. You can look at people's LinkedIn profiles and see how they got the job that they're in that you aspire to be in. How much is this course? This course is free. Next question, what can I do about income while in the boot camp? Danita, would you like to answer that? Sure. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I will say that one of the things that um, we first love to do or have to do is um, encourage you to assess where you are when you're applying for our program. We really do ask you to look at your support system and how um, you're going to um, commit to it. It is a full-time commitment. With that being said, we've had participants who um, can can maintain a part-time job if they will. Um, but I would also like to highlight that one of the things that makes our program very unique is that we do have the supportive services that Brandy mentioned um, that help from anything within limits, obviously per um, participant, but rent assistant, child rent assistance, child care, um, your utilities. So we really do um, uh, take pride in being able to assist um, with removing any barriers that may um, hinder you from completing uh, the program. But it is a full-time commitment. You're going to get the, the most knowledge and be successful by committing full-time. And so um, we, we encourage you to make sure that you um, enroll at a time that you can commit um, and have the, the, the income and support um, to, to help you complete the course. With that being said, we do have rolling admissions. So if you can apply for the May cohort and it works uh, better for you to start in the fall, you can do that as well. Um, so um, we just encourage you to look at where you are first um, to see if this is the right time. But um, we do have ways to assist you with maintaining um, and getting to the co cohort in a successful way. Kayla, when um, someone submits an application, when can they expect to hear something back? Of course, I would always forget to unmute. So our process, of course, we um, the process itself, all in its entirety is going to take a little bit of time. It'll probably take a few weeks to get all the way through. So you do want to um, go ahead and get your application in as soon as possible. And from there, you should hear from us within two business days. Um, just letting you know, of course, if there's anything missing from your application or if you're eligible to move forward with the next step. Thank you. And um, one more for you. Who should people contact if they have further questions? <laughs> So you can, of course, again, contact us at admissions at innovatebham.com. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any further questions, please send them to, once again, admissions at innovatebham.com. And we look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Thank you.